Good evening, everyone. I don't need a mic. <laughs> Very good. Okay. Have you ever walked through a desert where everything seems dry and barren? Everywhere you walk, you see sand, plants. It seems to kind of live without water. And as, let's say, you're passing down the tin freeway, coming from Pasadena, you're going to Palm Springs. And you get to see that sandy terrain, and you see those cragged mountains, and you, you know, it's kind of like tall, rugged, lots of sand, and miles of, of just sandy terrain. Well, you know, California has 25,000 square miles of desert, which reaches us from the Mojave <coughs> and goes to the Colorado. The Mojave is the high desert, and Colorado is the low desert. And there is both what they call flora, which is plants, you can even say flowers, and then there's fauna, which is wildlife. And you know the warm temperatures of California throughout the year attract many, many people to California. And California is a big desert surrounded by, like I said, tall mountains and just deep valleys. Um, and there's like very little rain. When you think about the desert, there's very little rain. And it just seems amazing kind of how plants and animals could survive in such a, an environment. And I would like today to describe to you a glimpse of a lesson that I learned at SEP through uh, what they term the oasis, okay? And what, what, what that kind of meant to me and how we could even apply it a little bit spiritually. So, you know, you see the name oasis, okay, on my shirt and I described earlier at services that only a seeker is satisfied, is fully satisfied. And so like in a desert place where you go to, you have to find the water, right? It comes from a source. And so, you know, you go to a desert, the temperatures are high. And like I said earlier, the definition of an oasis from the dictionary is a fertile or green spot in a desert or a wasteland made so that, made so by the presence of water. So it's kind of life giving. And I just like us to think about our lives because our lives are filled with mountains and valleys. And the mountains describe the high points in our lives, uh, where everything just seems to be going really, really well. And the valleys describe the barren times in our life, where we feel like we're without, or someone maybe dies, and we can't understand this pain that just is so deep within us. And it's very strong. But yet it's necessary for us as people of God to have both mountains and valleys. And it's just something that's very, very interesting when we think about our life. Now, um, I just want you to listen to a description, as I said earlier, of John 7, 37, 38. Jesus said on that last and great day of the feast, he stood in a loud voice. And he said, anyone who is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. And whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly, will come streams of living water, will flow from within him. So that is a spiritual example of an oasis. Because our oasis is Jesus Christ. And he is the source of everything, of everything that we live for, of everything that we do. He is the source. And I said earlier that an oasis is a fertile or green spot in a desert. So the presence of water, that life-giving water, Jesus Christ, is very special. Camp was a little bit different this year because, like I said earlier, you know, Mr. Watson is always there and he has that archery and we have riflery and we can do the bug and reptiles, but I, we didn't have that. And I, it, it felt a little empty. I thought, man, it seems like something's missing. But it seemed like spiritually there was a lot of growth. You know, um, so what I want to say as I'm kind of moving towards into my conclusion, I want to say that only a seeker is satisfied. So we as Christians, we have to fully seek God. We cannot just be half-hearted about things. We must fully seek God. If you can give me the kind of idea of time. <laughs> so, so. And I would like to say this. Uh, we need to be people of God who really seek him. And I'd like to read Psalm 84. Psalm 84 is the oasis, Jesus Christ. And this is a description of our passion for him. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord Almighty. 
My soul yearns and faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found its home and a swallow, a nest for herself, where she may have her young, a place near your altar. O Lord Almighty, my King and my God, blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. And so my experience at SEP was, as I looked at the mountains and I looked at those green trees and I saw the beauty of God's creation, I really, really thought a lot about, Jesus, you made, you created all of this. But you know what? If I don't have a relationship with you, it doesn't even matter. It doesn't matter. It means nothing. So I'm realizing that this oasis, that is Jesus Christ living his life in me, becomes something that if I can become full and filled with him, then I can share that with others. And so at SEP, through a lot of prayer for those who were sick and what have you, I just really felt that the living oasis, which is Jesus Christ living in me, helped me to be a, a stronger Christian. I was able to rededicate myself to Christ. And I would encourage all of us, and especially myself, to remain in him, because to stay attached to the vine. Because Jesus Christ is the vine, and we're the branches. And you know what? To me, the work is going out and bringing other people to know what this place is like, this oasis in the middle of the desert.